Welcome to Beside the Burn for Saturday the 19th of March. We come to the end of another week of our Lent studies, a 40 unseen woman of the Bible from Eden to Easter. But what a story we leave you with at the end of this week. Yesterday we were thinking about Deborah and uh, Barak and how they went after the commander Sisera and uh, Barak had been told because of his cowardice that it would be a woman who would receive all uh, the glory because of the victory that God was going to bring to Israel and Barak wouldn't receive any of that recognition. And we got to the point where Deborah had gone with him into battle and had um, stood by his side and it looked as though Deborah was the one who was going to uh, get all the glory but... We're going to read the second part of the story today from verse 16 of Judges chapter 4. And we discover another woman in the story. And uh, so it's not Deborah who receives all the glory, but it's another woman called Jael. And Jael, well, what a dramatic end to this story uh, there is. If you've been reading along in the book and you've looked at that first verse that of uh, chapter 16 uh, of the book about jail, then you'll know how this ends. But it's almost like an episode, or it's almost like a game of Cluedo, where you have Miss Scarlet with the lead pipe in the library. Here we have jail with the hammer and the tent peg in the tent. And this is going to be an interesting story as to how God takes somebody who is insignificant, and elevates her to this important position. Somebody who appears to be powerless, and yet God uses her to defeat the powerful enemy. And we've maybe got a few parallels here as we look at Russia and Ukraine, and we pray that something would happen to Putin that would stop this invasion and that would cause everything to go back to the way it was and peace being restored. We need one insignificant, as it were, powerless individual to rise up against the great leader and to take them out and to hand the victory to Ukraine. So let's read together from um, Judges chapter 4, and we're going to read the next part from verse 16 down to verse 24 at the end of the chapter. And so far what has happened in the story, Sisera, the commander of Jabin, king of Canaan, has fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Harasheth Haggaim, and all Sisera's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazor, and the family of Heber, the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in, don't be afraid. So he entered her tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, he said, give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone in there, say no. So here is Sisera. He's just walked into this trap, as it were. He's spotted jail and he just starts issuing commands and telling her what to do. He's not interested in who she is or what she thinks. Just do this, get me a drink, say this, say that, keep me safe. And he falls asleep. Verse 21. But Jael, Heber's wife, picked up a tent peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. This is a woman that you would not mess with. Jael knows exactly what to do in these circumstances, and she is able to carry it out. Barak had been cowardly and wouldn't go out to battle unless Deborah was with him. Jael just simply gets the job done. 
Verse 22. Just then Barak came by in pursuit of Sisera and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her and there lay Sisera with the tent peg through his temple, dead. On that day God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites. And the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. Amen. God uses Jael, who appears to be weak and insignificant, and yet changes the whole battle and changes the fortunes of the whole nation. And therefore, we have to be careful whenever we feel as though we're powerless and that there's nothing that we can do. We are simply called to be faithful to God and he will produce the results. We're simply called to obey God and do what he asks us to do. And there are perhaps many things today where we feel powerless, but God is calling us to do something for him. So let's pray the prayer. Almighty God, King of kings and Lord of lords, ruler of heaven and earth, may your power be demonstrated through our weakness. May we fear no one knowing that you are with us. May we always do what is right without fear or shame for your glory. Amen.